Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to use the pressure canner. So yesterday I made beef broth and I actually cooked it in my pressure canner because it's a huge stout pot and cook that. So now I'm gonna take what I did yesterday. We're gonna put it in jars and we're gonna start the pressure canner and I'll walk you through that process. All right, here's my setup and it is not fancy and it's taken me many years of canning to finally simplify things for myself. So I'm just gonna share with you what works for me and the little tricks I've found to make it helpful. So instead of doing all of this in my kitchen, um, just because it makes a huge mess and takes up a lot of room, now I bring it all outside and this is my setup and I can just use my garden hose to wash everything off and excuse my noisy chickens in the background. They are laying their eggs for the day. So what I've got here is my propane tank that I pulled out of my camping trailer. We bought this little stand at our local True Value store. And here's my pressure canner. And I just washed it all out. This is what I cooked my beef broth in yesterday. So here's my racks that are gonna go in the pressure canner. So this one is a, I don't even know how big this pressure canner is. The dimensions but it's a big one and this little rack goes right on the bottom we're gonna put one layer of jars there I'm doing small pints and then this one is gonna go on top of that and I'll have another layer of jars what I have so, I'm just gonna set that so what I've done so far this morning is I took and I strained my beef broth that I made yesterday so this is my mess I've got going on so this I just throw my strainer on top of my bowls. So this has got the liquid from, here's the remnants. So I've got vegetables and a bucket of oh, my shadow, of bones and veggies. So this I could can in the jars, but I don't want to because this particular liquid I want to use for making gravy, making soup, um, different things like that. So. And over here, I've got my, I'm using small pints. And the reason I'm doing small pints is because the, the mouth on these ones is a little bit smaller. So these are great for your liquid. I save my large mouth jars for putting like pears in and peaches in and big things like that. So these have a little bit of a smaller neck on them. And these are great for just liquids. So this is how I store them. I store them in my canning room, clean, upside down. I grab my bin when I'm ready, load it with however many jars I need. This is my little setup. So these are all clean lids. Some people say you can't reuse them. If the seals are fine on them and you open them carefully without denting them, I've had good luck reusing them. I also keep my rings on a piece of shoelace and this just helps me better organize my small lids from my large lids and I just tie a little bow tie on it. So this is my little setup today. Oops, I'm going to fall over and I'll show you the process when we get a little closer. So I'm getting ready to fill my jars. So what I do is I get my um, little funnel and the key to there's just a couple of super important things. You can put anything in a jar, but you don't want to overfill them. You want to leave like three quarters of an inch at the top. Anytime I've accidentally overfilled them, this, they, it bubbles out in the canner and comes out inside the canner and makes a big stinky mess. So I'm going to fill my jars. I'm always a little bit conservative and go a little bit on the left side and that's just me. You can do whatever you want, but I love doing this outside. Oops, so there, I just totally overfilled that one, but no big deal. There we go. Cause at the end of it, I just take my dish soap and my garden hose and hose it all off. And then it's all out here in the grass makes it way easier for me. I've got my jars cleaned up, my lids on, and my rings on. 
uh, there's just a couple super duper duper important things is that when you're filling your jars, um, after you fill them, I'll take a washcloth and I clean it frequently. I'll probably clean five jars and then rinse my rag out. And I only have one hand here, but I do this two handed. You're going to clean and I go one direction the whole time, but you're, this ring on top of the jar has to be completely clean. So I'll, with two hands, I'll hold my jar and rub my towel around where the ring goes that tightens it down and where my lid sits. When I'm doing that, I will run my finger over the top after they're clean with a clean finger and make sure there's no chips in it. So as I was filling these, this one, it looks good, but there's actually a little chip out of the glass there I can feel with my finger and on the edge right here is rough. So I'm not gonna use that because that will actually make it so your jar does not seal. This one, same thing, there's a chip. I think I might be able to show you. Out of that glass, anyway, there's a little chip on that ring and that is gonna make it so it won't seal. So after you've got your stuff in there or before, you can run your finger through over all of your jars and make sure they're good to go. So I fill them, clean them with my rag and frequently clean my rag so I'm not smearing little itty bitty parts I can't see on there. And I'm gonna set my lid on and then I screw the ring on. And when, just like that. But I need two hands to get that a little tighter. So this is what we look like. Gonna be the best part ever. If you're a mom, I have a little bit of spilled um, broth kind of throughout my table. Here's all my mess. I'm gonna clean all of this outside in my big old farm sink. Here's the cleanup before I put them in the so I'm gonna do this before I put them in the canner so that any mess on the side of the jars, it just kind of helps keep my canner cleaner. And I like that. So this just makes it super duper easy. I've filled my jars. I've wiped the, ring, the lids down or the edge of my jar. I've put my lids on, I've put my rings on. I've hosed everything off, rinsed it off with soap. I took two washcloths, one to hold the jar and one to tighten that ring down and got it really tight. This is how full my jars are of liquid. Now they're gonna go in the pressure canner. First, what we're gonna do, another great reason. <laughs> We only want about two inches of water in a pressure canner because the steam is what seals it. Okay. I've got eight pints on the bottom rack. Then I'm gonna put this little shelf and we're gonna put eight more. So we'll do 16 pints in this pressure canner. One of my really good friends bought me this cookbook or canning book for a gift and I highly recommend it. I've, my mom canned, my grand, all my grandmas canned, my aunts, we've all been doing it forever. But um, this is just an awesome book. So to wonder how long, etc. we've got a beef stock recipe, we've got vegetable stock. So anything you can think of to put in a jar is in here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, basically we're gonna cook these at 10 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes for pint jars. If you were doing a quart jar, it would be longer. I've got 16 pints of beef broth in the pressure canner. There's two inches of water in here. I'll grab our lid, sitting on top of my hot tub. Now with the pressure canner lid, mine has these little teeny clips and they're not on every single one. I don't know how well you can see this. So if you've never done this before, I'm just gonna set my lid down. And so here we have a little clip. You're just gonna turn it and those little clips will hook right underneath there. Then it's 
got, let's see how many of these do we have? Six. So when you button down your pressure canner, you don't want to start here and work your way around a circle because then it tips it. It doesn't get a flat seal. So I'm going to do this one and you're not going to do it as tight as you can right off the bat. So we just kind of go opposite and just get it on there. Now I'll come over here and do this one. And I just work my way around. That way you get a, and these are barely being screwed on at this point. So now I'm gonna go opposite again and work my way around it and button them down really tight. Or kinda, just, that one's a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna keep going. And they're kind of slippery. So I hope you guys can see this. A lot of people are afraid of pressure canners, but as long as you button this down good, then you're good. I need to go get my pressure valve release thing that's in the house. And I'll start it up and show you. We're at the end of our process. I have my jars in there, 16 pints. I found that um, pressure dial. So that, I don't know if you can see this very well, but it's got the 10, 15, and five. So I want 10 pounds of pressure. And here's my pressure gauge, it's dirty. When it gets to 10 pounds of pressure, this will automatically start to let off steam and this will jiggle a little bit and be a little bit noisy. So that's releasing the extra pressure when we do not want more than 10 pounds of pressure. If our recipe called for five pounds of pressure, we'd flip this to five. If it called for 15 pounds of pressure, we'd flip this to 15. And this just has like little holes on it that fit right over that. So this recipe is 10 pounds of pressure. So when my dial gets up here, sorry guys, it'll start to release. And then we're gonna cook that at 25 minutes once that gets to temperature. When it's done, we're gonna shut our propane off. We're gonna let it cool all on its own. You do not pull that temperature dial to release any pressure because it releases too much pressure at once and then our jars won't seal. So it's important that this comes up to temperature slow. We don't want it on high heat. If we get it up too high, too fast, that's when I've had jars break because um, the glass gets hot too fast. So you want it on low, slowly bring that temperature up, slowly bring that temperature down, and then you can undo your lid and take your lid off. So this is super easy. It's just a long process because everything has to happen slowly. Nothing happens fast and you need to be home when this pressure canner is going. So it's super simple to do. It's just time consuming of just kind of babysitting it and checking on it throughout the day. I hope this video helped you of how to use the pressure canner. Those are just the basics, but it's very simple. If you wanted to cook meat or tomatoes or beans, things like that, those need to go in the pressure canner. I'll show you guys videos when I do my um, water bath, how that works. But if you have any questions, I do have a website. It's my farm website for our beef that we sell. But on there is my email and my cell phone number. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to um, get a hold of me. Go ahead and text me, whatever. Our website is drholtcattle.com. That's Dr. Holt, H-O-L-T, cattle.com. Have a great day.